What up, African world? It's your boy, Home Team here. I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And today, I want to talk about a black queen that is very dear to my heart. Now, Queen Amanatori was a Kandaki queen, or what the Greeks called Candace. The Greeks told us that these Candace queens would literally lead their troops into battle. That's some hardcore stuff. And by this pick, we can tell she's pretty thick. You see, Nubia having some hips was a sign of royalty, wealth, and health. And if the ancient Nubians saw our supermodels today, they would probably think they need some help. Your boy Sir Mix-a-Lot would have probably loved Queen Amanatori, cause we all know how he liked it. Now the unique thing about Nubia was its matrilineal system. Queen Amanatori ruled alongside her husband, not to comedy. Now in our 21st century minds, we might think to ourselves, oh okay, the king dominated and the queen just sat there and looked pretty. But no, Queen Monatori was a co-regent ruling alongside her husband with equal power and rights. Their reign together was the most successful reign in Nubian history. In fact, her palace today is a world heritage site. Queen Monatori actually initiated a lot of building projects in Kush or what we call Nubia. Now these building projects not only showed the wealth of her people and her empire, but it also showed her interest in spiritual and social development. Her reign was so successful and significant that it's actually mentioned in the Christian Bible in the book of Acts. See, in this story, one of her eunuchs was traveling to Jerusalem to worship and to pray. That story alone tells us two significant things about Queen Amanatori and her empire. It shows, number one, that there were Christians in her empire, and it also shows that she was tolerant of other religions. Now, tolerance of other religions and worldviews is a huge sign of greatness. In fact, Askia the Great in the Songhai Empire was also very tolerant of other religions and worldviews. And if he can be called great, then a monotory can be called great. Now, because of this matrilineal system in ancient Nubia, the queens actually had the power to dethrone their sons if they wasn't feeling their rulership. They can even demand for their sons to commit suicide. Yo. Now, Queen Amanatori had three sons, Arik Kankara, Arik Atani, and Shikari. Now, Arik Kankara actually died at a very young age, but we can tell by his victory stellar that he was actually a warrior prince. Now, Shikari actually became a king in the Nubian Empire after his father Natakamani died. Now there's a very interesting relief of his victory over some of his enemies. It shows him with his bows and his arrows and a god in the background actually aiding him in his victory. And I personally couldn't help but think that this looks strikingly similar to the image of 300. But yo, it's your boy home team, y'all. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Just for time.